on August 10th, 1976. I am Bernice Hetzner, Emeritus Professor nine. of Library Science. Huh? Nine. Is it nine? Just 1979. Oh, did I say 76? Yeah. Well, it's a good thing that you're, <laughs> you're really I on it, kid. We are recording. Yes, we are recording, but that's all right. Let's see what we've got. I think I'll stop it. Now. This is an interview with Dr. Mary Johan. The date is August 10th, 1979. I am Bernice Hetzner, uh, Emeritus Professor of Library Science. And Dr. Hien has kindly consented to talk a little bit about our experiences in academic medicine and to give us some information for her, for the archives of the uh, Library of Medicine, particularly in regard to the history of the University of Nebraska Medical Center. Dr. Hien, you uh, went to the University of Nebraska? Yes, to the University of Nebraska at Lincoln and to the University of Nebraska College of Medicine. But according to the information I have, you, after you got your degree from the University of Nebraska, you went to the University of Minnesota. Was that before you entered medical school? Yes. I was going to uh, carry on a career in uh, microbiology. I, uh, so I went to the University of Minnesota uh, and indeed did receive my uh, master's degree. Now, mm -hmm. I can't give you the exact year. I think I have it on your biographical yeah. sketch here. All right. And, uh, I but can it was wartime. Oh, it was? It was back. Was it some kind of uh, an accelerated program, or no. was this a regular program? Regular program, and I was going to start my PhD. Yes. But it was wartime, mm -hmm. and uh, they needed, they were drafting men all over the place, and they needed someone out at the University of West Virginia in Morgantown, West Virginia, mm -hmm. and uh, reluctantly they decided to give me that opportunity. So I went thinking, well, I can work uh, in the microbiology department there and uh, still work on my PhD on my own time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I left Minnesota. Uh, right after receiving my master's and went to Morgantown, West Virginia, landing there. <laughs> well, uh, I won't describe the weather. And Worse than uh, Nebraska? Oh, ever been in a coal mining town with uh, rain coming down <laughs> and, and nothing yeah. but soot in your face? That's I've never I, been in a place like that. That's it was. It was at the holiday season. I left home right after Christmas. Uh -huh. Okay. So I went to uh, Morgantown. Uh, may I ask you, you said they reluctantly gave you this. Why did you use the word reluctantly? I think women were not that popular. It, be, it was because of your uh, being I a had woman. the credentials, but it was... Uh -huh. uh, I won't get into any uh, e uh, ERA, uh, no. but... <laughs> it was a sign yeah. of the times, so, though, wasn't it? Yes. Uh -huh. And the chief there, oh, oh, I might say at this time that West Virginia was a two-year, the, the basic science. It was not a full four-year medical school. Mm -hmm. And so, I came as the assistant to a very, if we look back in history, a famous man, Rob Spaulding Spray, for whom the spray dish 
was named, mm -hmm. which is uh, an anaerobic culture dish. Uh-huh. And uh, Rob, what was his middle name? Spalding. Spalding. Uh -huh. Spray. Uh -huh. And uh, he did not exactly appreciate a woman either. And so the man that had to go to the army, been his assistant, was named, I don't even know his full name, but it was Charlie. He never called me anything but Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I was Charlie. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid that, that name didn't follow you, though, did it? No, yeah. not from there. Yeah. For a while, well, eh, so we'd been there for a while, and it, uh, he he was not too well, mm -hmm. and uh, he uh, uh, got ill him, himself. He had a well, he had bronchiectasis. So oh. I don't know if that makes any difference or not, but it did there, and he had to quit. And there I was, I was the department of microbiology. How many students did you have there? Forty. Forty? Uh-huh. And uh, <clears throat> so I lectured to them in microbiology. I also decided they needed something else. So I started a school of medical technology because in my past I had been a medical technologist uh -huh. and uh, earned at Nebraska, I might add. Uh -huh. And uh, I started a school of medical technology there, and finally uh, we got help in the form of a man. His name was John Slack. He came from Nebraska, who used to work with me <coughs> and Dr. Millard Gunderson. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, you worked then as med tech in Omaha before you went to West Virginia? Because Miller Gun Gunderson was here. Yeah, I worked uh -huh. for him as a med tech. Uh -huh. <coughs> Excuse my voice. That's all right. So John took over, and one day the and dean out there called me in and said, uh, uh, Mary, what are you doing here? I told him. He says, but you really want to go to medical school. I said, well, I know more microbiology than they're ever going to know, but I want to know what they're learning. Yeah. True. Uh -huh. He said, well, you can stay here, teach half time, and uh, the medical school have to. Well, I said, gee whiz, it takes me four years to do the first two years, then I got to go someplace and else to finish. Finish up, yeah. And he said, well, you think about it. So I said, well, I, I'll take a vacation, I'm going back to Omaha. And I came back here, and the dean was a Dr. Pointer. Oh, way back then. Yes. Yeah. Well, still more time, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh huh. And I went into Doctor Pointer and uh, told him about this, and he just laughed and said, uh, "We wondered why you never did this. We knew you probably should and would." Sent me down to interview Doctor Perry Tolman. Yeah. Who said, "Well." I see you finally made up your mind. And I went back upstairs and I was in medical school. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. I mean, you didn't go through all this admissions application. <laughs> you talked to Dr. Pointer. MCAT tech. This is exactly what Holyoke said, that Dr. Pointer ran the school and if he said you were in, you were in. You were in. And yeah. you didn't talk to anybody else. Yeah. You didn't take any MCAT tests, <laughs> medical college admission tests. Yeah. You didn't do any anything yeah. like that like they do now. Uh -huh. And apply to fifteen schools and have admissions yeah. committees working on you and all that. 
business and being interviewed. If Dr. Pointer said, you're in, you're in. And he never, he didn't make many mistakes either, did he? If, if, if well, that sounds said. like I'm bragging, but I don't think so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, but uh, it's from all I hear, though, he ran the schools that way, and he did. He picked the students that way, and these were the students that turned out to be pretty darn good physicians. Yes, ma'am, they did. And they all come back and say nice things about him. He was a very straightforward, honest, and you didn't need to worry. Whatever he said, you could take as this is the way it is, and it's fact, and it's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I admired him tremendously. This is what everyone that I've talked to has said. And it's just, I, see, when I knew him, it was just after he'd retired. And, uh, so, but. and there are many people who uh, try to be Dean. Yes. You may want to, <laughs> but maybe I should not. Uh, That's all right. This is the kind of uh, well, uh, Dr. Information Ru uh, Rudy Shaken wanted badly to be dean, but he was not so chosen. I don't know whether the Board of Regents did it. I don't know how it was done. And uh, he had a very able and fine assistant. Who was, there was no uh, Dr. Benjamin. Oh, yes. Remember yes, Dr. Dr. Benjamin? Dr. Benjamin. Mm -hmm. He was a fine man. And then, uh, about that time, the war was either over or he got out or he'd done his term, J. Perry Tolman was out of service and came back and became dean. Well, now wait a minute. Isn't that right? J. Perry Tolman didn't come until after Dr. Luth left. Oh, that's right. We had Dr. Luth. We Luth. had Dr. Uh, Luth. Harold Luth. Harold Luth. It took the, over yes. the deanship after uh, uh, Pointer retired. That's right. He was from Evanston. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and when he left, Perry was still in service because he didn't go with the rest of them. He went, he was the assistant dean and he went off to the Air Force sometime along about 1950. Because he was frozen in his job, I believe. That could have been. Yeah. But when I graduated, I thought, I guess Luth was still being there. When did you graduate? 1950. Yes. It was Luth. But then, as I understand it, uh, Luth uh, apparently antagonized some people. Well, he was very much, uh, now, Medically and capability-wise, I'm sure he was very fine, but he had that sort of a, now hear this. Too much army. Too much army. Uh -huh. And in fact, the seniors at their annual banquet uh, were not very kind, were not I very was there. kind to him. <laughs> the one with the big eagles? Yes. Yes. The brown shoes. Yes. With the dark blue suit. Yes. And they gave him a white shirt because he was yes. always wearing his old brown army shirt. shirt. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. That was up at the Blackstone. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes indeed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, then, you see, after Luth left, uh, you must have been, oh, you did your internship in, in Then Illinois. I went to Chicago Research and Edu uh -huh. Education Hospital in Chicago, University of Illinois, Yeah. for my so, year's internship. And when you came back, Perry Tillman was dead. Well, you see, I went from there to the Mayo Clinic. To Mayo's, yeah. Because I had decided to specialize. in internal medicine, and I had the opportunity and was accepted. 
Oh, that was grand. Everything's going good. That, that then I was asked, there. oh, it's tremendous. Yeah. It's tremendous. Yeah. Of course, there's nothing like it is today. I went, did most of my services and things in the old building that still has the, the bells that at noon and so on ring and... The plumber building. The plumber building. Yeah, that's uh -huh. right. The old plumber building. Yeah. And then they started building the new... The new clinic building. And I got to be there, in there for... They got it finished, so I got to do two or three services in there, and that was about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But they went out of the plumber building and sort of... Well, across the street. Yes, it's, it's kind of across the street. Kind of across the street from yeah. the plumber building. Uh -huh. And uh, that hotel... Uh, Kaler. Kaler. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were... Was that a four-year residency? Three. Three years. Three years? That's what was required, but I stayed on because I got interested in endocrinology Mm -hmm. and did some extra work in uh, in metabolic disease uh, yeah, under Edward Reinierson. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, I think, uh, Bernice, I'm not sure, but uh, I want to say Howard Polly, but there's a big man in, rheum in rheumatism. Uh, the one that, that, that um, uh, first advocated cortisone? Right. Begins with F, wasn't it? Fink? No. No? No, that's not it. Ah. Oh, dear. Uh, I can't remember. I can look it up. Yeah, I, I can't. Yeah. I can't say it now. I want to say Howard po uh, Polly, but there was somebody even more well-known in that field than me. There were two fellows that wrote about it, somebody and somebody that, that, I can remember the library articles, everybody wanted to read them. Yeah. Yeah. Why can't it say his name? Uh, well, I'll look it up. But it had to do with the use of cortisone. Yeah. And ACTH. Yes. We didn't know what we were doing with it either. No, the there was all kinds of strange tales about the side effects. There. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, there was. <laughs> oh, I'm really upset that I can't remember the doctor's name. He was so well known, but I can't. It's like we were watching television this morning, and this face came on. And they were celebrating some kind of a. a anniversary for the Today Show, and we could stand there. Who is that guy? Who is Dave Garraway? Oh. <laughs> Couldn't think until they told us who it was. You want to know something? I had Dave Garraway once for a patient. Oh, you did? <clears throat> Helped at Mayo's? Yes. <laughs> he was having an emotional problem. Really? Yes. And that's quite a few years ago. That's probably when he was in his heyday and the stress was getting to him. Huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, well, then uh, they offered me the opportunity to stay at Mayo. Yeah. And I decided I hadn't been living in, well, with a silver spoon in my mouth. I had it made. <laughs> And I wondered what I could do on my own. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, I was invited down here to, have, to give a speech because they were looking. They had a head of the Department of Medicine, but nothing else. And they were was just, this when they were just beginning to have departments of medicine and surgery, and they were, you know. You don't mean Moody? It, it was Grissom who was on yes. this team. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, he was the chief. 
and I was the first person they hired. Mm -hmm. And I created all of the, uh, they had a degree, or not a degree, but a, a rank that they don't have anymore. I came down as instructor yeah. in internal medicine thinking, what better place could I be but at a teaching institution to get ready to take my boards? Yeah, yeah. So then they hired me and then they, I was advanced to uh, what they called associate, which didn't mean they don't even have that rank anymore. Uh, and then uh, from there, then they hired uh, Fred Poston, and I became assistant professor. Did Poston start out as an instructor? Yes. Well, sure, he, did, he had just finished his residency right there, didn't That's he? That's right. Uh -huh. And then <coughs> uh, we hired Cal Davis. <coughs> and I became associate professor. Uh -huh. So now we had all the ranks from instructor to professor. Yeah. yeah. And then later, after, <coughs> you know it's rather popular, you have to publish or perish. Oh yes, you have to publish. You can't just get it handed to you. You have, and so, you have to do something. I had to get busy and write some papers. You'd passed your boards way back. Yeah, I passed my yeah. boards. First time you took. And I said, well, I guess I'll leave. It was last word. I never left. <laughs> yeah. I stayed. Uh -huh. I enjoyed teaching. Yeah. I'm sure the stu as students all enjoyed having you teach. Wasn't that one of the great rewards that these students seemed to respond. Yes, they did. Yes, yeah. Yes, they did. Yeah. <coughs> and I didn't get some of the baddies at the banquets. <laughs> In fact, they invented some that um, I tried to bury. <laughs> I have one of them. Which one's it? It's the finger. Oh, <laughs> at my home. Yeah, uh -huh. and because it really hurt some people's feelings. Yeah. It wasn't funny. I didn't like that either. No, no. I don't know where they still do it. I got. I haven't gone to a bank. They do a some time. of those. I haven't either. No. Uh, but uh, they do some things. Yeah. But yeah. oh, it isn't all that bad anymore. They don't. But that finger will really hurt people. It seems to me that um, they went too far at one time and then they kind of uh, decided to, you know, stop. You know, the, uh, maybe I, I don't think I'll tell this. The cast of that hand, you know whose hand that is? No. Should I tell? Sure, you can tell me anyway. Calvin <laughs> Davis. Really? Well. He posed for it. Yeah. He was in the class of uh, oh, oh, sixty-seven. Uh -huh. and that was the first year they had it. Oh, really? And of course, it kept on for years. Yeah. Uh -huh. And many times they, and they kept wanting to give it to people. I mean, a couple of years I asked them to give it to me. But I didn't care. Yeah. I mean, I you know. Uh -huh. And so instead of giving it to me by name, they gave it to me by. Uh, they gave it to national boards. Well, I was in charge of their taking national boards, oh, and so I see. they gave it to uh -huh. national boards. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, I hope, and they also, well, they wanted to give it to some of our uh, regents sometime, but it never got done. Well, it's probably just as well. It's yes, it's just as well. <laughs> I remember the year that. Bob Strathbucker put on the movie. Do you remember the movie? Oh my goodness. Wasn't that fun? Oh yeah. That kind of broke the spell of, you know, these, this uh, hazing. Uh, he put on this, and that was, 
in, it included a lot of funny things for the faculty, but it was it was a fun thing rather than. Uh, yeah, they'd come up and you'd do something. I don't know. They came. Yeah. Up. I think I was in a couple of them. I don't. Yeah. I don't remember. But they kept having Samani come by and dropping down a manhole or something. You remember yeah. Samani? Vaguely. Yeah. He was from one of the uh, Near East countries. Awesome. And, um, and I remember they had McWhorter and, and some of those oh. fellows dressed up as, uh, you know, like on Guys and Dolls, you know. Yeah, they, they picked on McWhorter, they picked on uh, various people. Yeah. They picked on Dr. Gibbs. Yeah. They picked on, you know, uh -huh. I don't like some of that. No. no. I just don't like that. But you know, all of these memories of things, we had an awful lot of fun. Didn't we know? While we were building. Yeah, yeah. It was at a time when almost everybody knew everybody else. Everybody knew everybody else. With that old dumb parking lot out in the back. Yes. In the old building wards A and B and C and D. And then yeah. in the back there was Ward H with the women's medicine. And then across the way was a good friend of mine, her name was Bernice Hetzner. Yeah, she had the library. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have any air conditioning and we had the windows open oh. and dust from that, that, all that construction for Children's Hospital. They'd come in, you know, when well, they graded they that bank down. Were they doing anything about Epley or, uh, no? No. Clarkson was across. Clarkson was going up in the, what, middle 50s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And moving from downtown. Yes. Well, they moved, didn't that building open about 1954 or 5? Somewhere in there, yeah. yes. That's about the same time that the MPI opened. Right. And, and, and Cecil Wetson came Cecil in. Cecil Wetson came in. There is a great man. Isn't he wonderful? And let me tell you something. If anybody can get blood out of a turnip, <laughs> Cecil Wetson did it and can do it, I think, to this day. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a very fine man. Oh, he, we just wouldn't have the library that we have it if it wasn't, if it hadn't been for Dr. Whitson. Well, he was always being recognized for something by the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, the one thing I remember is that he couldn't sit still. <laughs> No. He would come in my office to talk to me. I was right across the hall. Yeah. And he'd come into the office to talk to me. And he was sort of a chain smoker. And when he left, he'd pace back and forth and back yeah. and forth. Yeah. I felt like I'd been watching a tennis game. And every ashtray in my office was full of cigarettes. Yeah. He stopped smoking, did you know that? Oh, I'm sure he has. Yeah. yeah. Or did. Well, he did, what was it, a year or so ago? Well, he was ill, quite ill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's when he... He had some cardiac disease. Yeah. Finally decided yeah, he could. Decided to quit. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've been talking to Pete Vaughn about getting in touch with Cecil Whitson and seeing if I can interview him. But I'm practicing on some few people before I get to yeah. Cecil. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but... We would never, I don't think, have had the expansion at the university mm -mm. Mm -mm. without him. No. But he was he was apparently in touch with everything that was going on because he'd say to me, well, I'm going to give you some more money at the library. And, well, fine, you know, we were always poor. Sure. And then a year or two years later, we'd find out that there was federal money on a matching basis depending on what you'd spent over the last couple of years. And he knew this was coming. How he knew all these things, I don't know. I don't know either, but like I said, he had his ear into everything. And, and uh, his eye on everything. Oh, yes, yes. If there's any money to be had, he could get it. Well, this is what Rena Boyle said. He would always say, well, tell me what you want. I'm not sure I can get it for you, but tell me what you want. You you plan your program, and she said almost every time he, 
he came up with whatever it took to do it. Well, next thing you know, he'd been to HDR, <laughs> and we had money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. But uh, it just. Um, I just yeah. thought he was, and he he himself was a tremendous psychiatrist, and uh, I, yet he could give it up and give himself to the development of the university and the College of Medicine. Well, don't you think his background in psychiatry? So, well, what I think was a sort of a small time operation grew, developed, and became, I'm very proud, sincerely, to be a graduate of the University of Nebraska College of Medicine. Well, and I think I could, I mean, so, I'm glad the famous last words came, that I could stay at Mayo, but I came here and stayed here, and I'm not sorry. Well, that's great. And you know, we have graduates, you know, all around the world, up and down the country, and they're well thought of. Oh, indeed we have. People like Tupper and uh, some of those fellows. That well, see, Tupper on. became dean of uh, Irvine, didn't he? The University of California. Or is it Davis? Or da Davis, you may be Davis. Right, Davis. Uh -huh. University of California, Davis. Uh -huh. I was thinking of Irvine, Davis. Mm -hmm. And, uh, gee, I can't, uh, we've got some other Oh, Bob Volz is just going great guns in orthopedics down in Arizona. Yes. B O L C. Yeah. I believe that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've got uh, well, you've got nice people like. Deron and oh, Weeks and Deron and Weeks. But I was trying to think of some of these uh, oh people like Frank Land. Yes. Who went on to develop, uh, went back to Washington and mm -hmm. develop areas back there. Mm -hmm. And uh, who I thought was a tremendous man he is a tremendous man. Yes. Although he himself is not too well right now. Well, Stephen Wetson was able to bring um, uh, that research man to Lincoln, um, the one who was in charge of the grants office. Uh, I'm like you. Her name. He had worked um, in HEW, NIH, in the grants program. And then he brought him back to Lincoln. And he had All I can think of is the woman that was with him. Oh, oh I, you're, you're thinking about Sally Chapel. Yes, yes. Yes. Well, her husband was a famous pediatrician. Yes. Uh huh. And uh -huh. uh, yeah. Well, he wanted to come here here for the Veterans Administration. Yes. So. Uh, Sally had worked uh, in various public health areas. Because I know she worked right in the office area where I worked, mm -hmm. was her office. Yeah. Uh -huh. But she wasn't working for me. Well, and then there was Kugel. Yes. Yes, it was Dr. Kugel, who was a very fine pediatrician. Kugel, um, a bit controversial as a dean, yes. but who doesn't create controversy? I guess? Everybody gets into controversies now and then. But he was the advocate of the the this three-year program, right? Yes, I think he was very much a part of the three-year program. Which, by the way, I'm glad to see going out of. The it's out now, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because I don't think. These uh, young men and young women were having to make up their minds about what they wanted to specialize in before they hardly knew uh, what the basic sciences were all yeah. about. Yeah. 
and had, they didn't know what to, when matching time came around and applying for residencies, they weren't ready. They weren't ready. Really, uh, Bernice, it was bad. Well, I was... In, one, in some ways, maybe I'm sure there's some good in it, too. But um, I had occasion to look at a record of a student, and he was a very good student up until the last year, and then boom, you know, dropped from, say, third, fourth, fifth in his class down to way, way below the middle, and I thought, well, what happened to this person? Yes. And then I realized, well, he graduated in the three years, and I, th I bet you it just was too much of a push. Yes, he had to make up his mind about things. Uh -huh. He didn't have time to really sit yeah. down and ponder now. Yeah. Do I want to be in pediatrics? Do I want to be in medicine? Do I want to be a surgeon? Do I want to be uh, a, a generalist? And by the way, there is no such thing as a, a GP anymore no. in that sense. It in itself, as a family practice, is a specialty. Yes, yes. And they must take uh -huh. the, the training for it. Well, what you've said, you see, just bears it out in this particular instance. He didn't go into his specialty until about 10 years after he graduated. Yeah. It took him all that time to, you know, kind of get himself oriented, I guess. Yeah. yeah. True. And then we did a thing that we were interested in because I had a visit from a young man the other day and I couldn't believe my eyes at the time of the Bay of Pigs. Yes. And this man and his brother escaped from Cuba when Castro took over. Yeah. And they got to this country, to Florida, mm -hmm. and then somehow up to Nebraska and got their parents out. Mm -hmm. And uh, they went to the university in Lincoln. And he appeared on the scene the other day, Carlos, no, not Carlos, that's the brother, Jose Prendes. And uh, he's going to be associated at the present time and just decided to associate him with our Department of Neurology at the Medical Center. Great. <laughs> All the way around the clock. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And I think people thought that we were crazy, but these were fine young people. Why should they be denied? Yeah. Uh -huh. But they were not going to stay in Cuba with Castro. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I think that, uh, you know, there are so many things that go on in this world and have been going on. It goes so, it, you, you wonder sometimes who's, yeah. that old joke, who's on first and where's, <laughs> that old joke, who's on first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we really, uh, just to see it develop, to see the schools develop, other universities, that where nothing have picked up. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's just like little old four year, two year old, two year of West Virginia is a well known four year. Four year school now. In school now. Uh huh. There's some very fine people. Uh -huh. University of South Dakota was two year. Yeah. Now it's a full four year school. Uh huh. And their former dean was with us. <coughs> It was. Yes, but he is still working. He told me where he was working, just as a, you know, kind of a part-time. He's working in a lab out on Pacific Street. Some biological... Dr. Hard? Yeah, Dr. Hard. Uh -huh. Really? Yeah. Uh -huh. He's retired, you know. Yes. But he just does this for fun, you know. I'll be... Just having a ball. <laughs> Dr. Lava. Oh. He comes down to the library three you know, days a week. Can I tell you a story about him? Sure. We were so frightened of him as medical students when we were in embryology. Uh -huh. And after an exam, we'd wait for he when he'd come to the door and start walking to there, wait for that hand on the shoulder. And, and if he said, Miss Hen, would you come down to my office? Your heart would just go. <laughs> but when you got down there, he might tell you you're funk. He might say, uh, 
you know, that was one of the best exams. You wrote one of the you never knew what was going to happen. Yeah. You either come back on clouds or yeah. you came back, you know, your tail between the legs. But he was never mean about it. Never. No, that's what I A understand. perfect gentleman. Uh-huh. Absolutely perfect gentleman. Uh-huh. Then there was A. Ross McIntyre, <laughs> who earned his own uh, kind of fame in his own way. Uh-huh. Some favorable, some not so favorable. He was a very interesting person. Very interesting person. He could tell stories from here to there. Oh my yes. Oh my yes. And Dr. Bennett. Yes. And, and Dr. Bennett, I read a letter from him. Today, Dr. Grissom is going to go out to Colorado and visit him. And Dr. Grissom is going to take some tapes along. Oh, great. And he's going to talk to uh, Lawrence Bennett. To Lawrence Bennett? Yeah. Oh, I've, I haven't I, even thought of him in years, but he yeah. was a nice man. Yes. Delightful Answer man. Too. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Marianne Porter. Marianne so Porter. They, uh, they spend their winters in Arizona and their summers in Colorado. Mm-hmm. And we, did, we haven't forgotten Gundy now. No, let's talk about Gundy. Oh boy. Millard Fillmore and Millard F. Gunderson. Yes. He was quite a man. He came from Minnesota. No, he came from up in the corner, right near there. His wife, Doris, was a nurse from Minnesota. He came from right up in the northeast corner. South Dakota? No, of our state. I can't think of the name of the darn town. Up around Sioux Falls and up that way? Or um, Sioux City? Oh, darn. Just can't say it. I'll look it up. But anyhow, when I first came up here to medical school, I didn't have any place to, to stay, and I, so, and because I worked for him as a medical tech, uh-huh. I went to work, I, I, they gave me a room, and, and their son was in medical school, and I lived at the Gundersons. Was that when he lived there at 42nd Street? For a while, he made uh-huh. that all into apartments. For a while, yes, they lived upstairs, uh-huh. and he built an apartment in the basement with, with, uh, Two sets of bunk beds, and a bunch of us, either sometimes two of us, sometimes four of us, yeah. lived down there. I was one of them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. We looked out on the. We were our windows looked right out on these lawn. We were not way in the basement. Do you know what I mean? We are. We were sort of half down. Yes. And did it look out towards the Fire Row House? Or no, we looked out on 42nd Street. Oh, on 42nd Street. Well, I looked out on the Fire Row House, too. Yeah. And we used to watch the uh, shenanigans at the Fire Row House sometimes at their yeah. parties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it was it, uh, when was it that you did the um, research that, that went into dial soap? While I was working for Gundy. When you worked for Gundy, before you went to medical school? Yeah, I was Earth. trying to... Well, was both. It? I was trying to finance myself. Why you in medical school? Well, you and Bob Rosenloff uh, worked on this. Um, you don't remember that? Bob Rosenloff. Yes. You all. Everybody went around with some kind of a culture. I was thinking. Thing there. Well, what I did was, it was called G11, uh, and uh, they didn't have a name for the soap then. Armor and Company, uh, and then Hexachlorophene. Yes. And then we what we did was go around to the wards, and uh, we would scrub somebody's tummy, half of it with dial soap, yeah, and the other half with the ordinary green soap that they scrubbed with, yeah. And then we would apply these little tiny blood auger plates, yeah, and then culture them and then count them. Bacteria and found out that uh-huh. 
the hexachloroquine was much better and we could scrub a shorter length of time. So then we went up to surgery and we had the surgeon scrub three minutes with our hexachloroquine yeah. and the other scrub the usual, I forget the length of time, uh -huh. before going into surgery. And then we would have one of these blood agar plates underneath the gloves. Oh, see. Uh -huh. And then when they take their gloves off, we'd rescue the, the blood agar do the same thing, count the bacterial colonies. Yeah. And we found out that they could cut the scrub way down. You see? Yeah. And so armor like that, and the next thing you know, dial soap came off. And I've used it ever since. I guess so. I don't know. I have. Well, I have. <laughs> Dr. McQuitty was mixed up with that, wasn't he? I can't remember. But you had a publication on it, and it was cited yes. in some of the books. Um, yes. Um, you know, yes, I did do control. a publication uh -huh. on it because I wanted people to know about it. And then people got unhappy with hexachloroquine, and they started taking it out of things. <laughs> You know, this yeah. day and age, Bernice, something that is supposed to be perfectly fine, yeah. uh, I myself have a problem, which is neither here nor there, but uh, requires that I cannot eat regular sugar. So I use sugar substitutes. Mm -hmm. Those dummies now yeah. decide because some yeah. lonely rat someplace. <laughs> <laughs> I think the worst one was when they come out. They came out this week and, and said that there's something in Scott's whiskey. Well, I didn't hear that. Yes, this week, and they named the brand: Chevis Regal and Clay Sark and Jay and My Jay and Valentine. Why Chevis Regal is? <laughs> and it's it's got these um, nitro semines. Like Nitrosamines. Yeah, yeah, trosamines. Nitrosamines. Like, yeah. But they work on over there. Please. Minute, minute amounts of it. Mm -hmm. And this is a cancer causing agent. And the guys from the Edinburgh Association of Scotch Distilleries are just up in arms and that. Heck, <laughs> well, I thought I was giving somebody a really marvelous uh, Christmas present if I gave them some Chevis Regal or something. Well, sure, sure. Wow. They, they they said that let's see, Johnny Walker Black and White also was named. But it was in the paper of, um, I believe yesterday and the day before. And well, how about that? That's really taken the <laughs> that way. pretty soon we won't be able to eat anything or no. drink anything. No. <laughs> but if they take Sacker off, I'm gonna have a living fit. Yeah. Well, I, sometime, someplace along the line, somebody's going to have to draw off to this. Well, we got a new ATW secretary. Maybe that'll make it. <laughs> we still have the same under secretary of health, Judy yeah. Richmond. So. True. But uh, Califano is, is never one of my favorites, and I think I don't know this woman, but I, I mean. Give it a try, huh? Give it a try. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well. So it looks like you're going to get some. I hope so. Attention here. Yes, you I think you we can handle it tonight. Right? Yeah. Oh, huh? you bet. Um, tell you what. Don't you think that um, it would be a good idea if, yeah, sure, yeah, wait. if I uh, came back? Now, do you think this is going the way you want it to go? Sure, it is. It's it's just great. 